Hi, I'm Vanellum with Photo Focus. I'm on location here in beautiful Las Vegas at WPPI. And I recruited two of, the, two of these guys with me here. First off, the guy that left of me, you all know him. The man's an incredible photographer, incredible educator. We have my buddy Joe. How you doing, Joe? I'm good, Vanelli. I'll send you the check later. Thank you. <laughs> now, here's the funny part. We all know him. Here's the man who makes all this happen. All right. So, <laughs> Eric, how are you doing today, bud? Very good. Very good. Now, what's your official job at Olympus? Um, associate manager, uh, PR technical, but that also includes kind of running and managing the visionary side of the house. So, I mean, so think about this. I mean, Joe, we all know, a lot of us have been following him for years. The man's absolutely incredible as an educator, as a photographer, and what he does, which is really cool, is he takes a really complicated um, piece of work and simplifies it and says, hey, this is how you can get the same look using phenomenal gear, medium gear, and just okay gear. Yep. And what's really cool about this is you guys gave a man a bigger platform you know, on the world stage. And for that, I mean, I'm extremely proud of the stuff you do. Well, thank you, thank you. I, I Believe me, I've been blessed not only to be doing the teaching stuff, but for a company like Olympus to understand the value in that and to really help facilitate it. Honestly, I'm like a kid in a candy shop. It's, it's been great and it allows me to come to events like this and, and not only teach, but also get to connect with the people that watch me on YouTube and to be able to have conversations to learn how I can do it better, which is awesome. Now, for you, because you have a really hard job, because there's a sea of photographers out there. Yes, there is. What do you, what do you look for? What do you, you personally, that's your job, yeah. and your butt's on the line. Yeah. So, what do you do? Uh, as far as what we're kind of looking for, number one would be, you know, you're going to have social influence and things like that. Sure, because the, the, the stage is changing. But then the other thing, just within the market, you watched sales move from big box stores um, and then the, the smaller dealers started to shrink. Well, now everything's back to specialty. Why? Because human engagement. Um, so I would, I would say I can actually justify what I would look for and what I saw from Joe yesterday. So yesterday I joined Joe on his photo walk and there was 18 people and I was almost nervous with how much he pushed them. I was like, oh man, I was like, you're pushing me out of my comfort zone and I'm not even the one, you know, as far as how they engage the model, um, how he had them and, you know, how he explained like no posing. I want you to describe an emotion. I want you to interact with them. I'm not going to tell you how to do this. You need to do it. It's your vision. Work the shot. Make it happen. And pushing people beyond what they were comfortable with. So the number one thing that I would say with all of that is that would be defined as inspiration. So Joe is inspiring, and we look for people that are inspiring. Um, sometimes you can inspire just through image. It's great if I can put you in front of a crowd. Like, that's awesome. Um, not everybody can be as comfortable as Joe in front of a crowd. Um, but at the same time, there are multiple ways to be inspiring. Um, but the inspiration just to do more, not just because we validate through that inspiration, that work, the passion, not necessarily, oh, I'm a Olympus shooter for life. And this is what, no, 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 no. It's, this is who I am. This is what I do. And I utilize Olympus equipment to get there. Then that's kind of a win on my side. So, and that, that's something we've always joked about. In the industry, people would always, would always say, oh, I'm a Canon shooter, I'm a Nikon shooter, I'm an Olympus shooter. Oh, really? And there was that battle, but now the real pros are like, you know what? I chose Olympus for this reason. For you personally, now, I hate to say this, if you look at us two, ugh, the frustrating part is this man looks incredible, and he's older than me. All right, so, but you brought out a good point. The older you get, what did you decide? Well, I mean, there's a lot of things to it. The older I get, honestly, the simpler I want it. A, a lot of people look at Olympus because of size and weight and their commitment to mobility. And there's a logical you know, transition because you get tired of carrying heavier gear that weighs a lot. For me, it was a lot of stuff that just didn't have to do with that. I had gotten to a point, which I'm not proud of. I used my iPhone to take more pictures than I did my previous brand. and. 
the only time I took those cameras out, which weighed more, took up more space, and cost a lot more money, I took them out if I was getting paid, and that was it. And I started realizing, like, wait a minute, that's not how I got started in photography. Because let's face it, I've yet to meet the photographer that bought their first camera to make money. We're all kind of idiots because we get this brilliant idea, let's make money with it, and then the rules change, right? And that's exactly what I'd done. I, I, I just kind of went along with the crowd. I was like being a zombie, bigger is better, kept chasing. And it finally got to the point, like, I need to do something with my work, period. This really became the solution, and it took me a year and a half, because when you've worked with one brand for so long and you've chased that mentality, it really took a lot of kind of getting my head wrapped around it. And now, honestly, my only regret, I should have done it about five years sooner. I, I literally should have, but that's it. I, I, I love it. It meets all my needs. Right now, you've probably seen it on social media, I have a billboard that's yes. actually just by chance. It's about a mile from their offices. But well, 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 ironically, Joe, Joe posted that he couldn't make it in town for them to put the billboard up. Right. And he said, if anyone's going to be in town, could you film it? I did it for an episode. You must have had about 50 oh, people yeah. Yeah. volunteering yeah. that lived yeah. hundreds of miles away yeah. just to show up. So, yeah. but tell us more about the billboard. Yeah, but I mean, it's so it's a micro four third shot. It's on a 48 foot wide by 14 foot tall billboard, and it's tack sharp. You walk up to it, the edges are crisp there's no noise you know if we're going to bench test and we're going to go with technical numbers sure bigger sensors are going to come out ahead but we're not being practical about the cognitive aspects of photography right the technology is beyond what we're able to really process with our minds and with our eyes so you got to be realistic about what do you actually need out of your image I understand the photographers who take the approach of biggest is best and I have to have the newest and I have to have the best I get it, but I think honestly it's a psychological thing. I think because it's like, okay, if I'm gonna spend that kind of money, I want that confidence, but that doesn't make better pictures. It, it just simply doesn't. At the end of the day, I like enjoying my photography. I've been blessed to spend all or part of my life making my living with a camera, and that's why I've gone through so many different phases. I started out as a newspaper photographer. I opened a studio. I did portraits and weddings, because I get bored. And yes. I still tell people, I don't know what I'm going to do when I grow up, but one of these will be involved. It will absolutely be involved. And, and so I, for me, it was literally just about getting back to my roots and, and wanting to pick my camera up again. And if I could say something about the visionaries, which I admire the heck out of Olympus for, number one, it's obviously a great group of people, not because I'm a part of it, just incredibly talented photographers, but several of the Olympus visionaries are not full-time photographers. They are incredibly talented individuals with day jobs who go out and shoot. Every, I mean, honestly, guys like Jamie McDonald, Mike Baining, these two guys in particular, they both have day jobs and they are like machines. These guys do not go anywhere without a camera. They shoot incredible images that Olympus has used brilliantly in advertising. But what that says to me as, as somebody coming into the Olympus world, but to anybody else, you too can do this. You know, we have other brands that I'm not, not dissing another brand, but you know, Nikon obviously have people like Joe McNally, who is a god. I, I mean, let's face it, I, I would love to be Joe McNally, right? But the fact of the matter is the average person, myself included, is never going to reach that level of ability and creativity. So I think the fact that the brand is willing to take a chance, really, and, and actually promote people that are accessible. And when I say accessible, I mean just the fact that, hey, I have a day job and I could do that, but also accessible in the sense that these are two guys, if you go online, you ask them a question, you're gonna get an answer. Like these two guys, they, I like to say they bleed Olympus blue because they really do. They they love the, their, their photography, they love their brand. So to me, it was all kind of a perfect storm. I mean, I never had the thought that I would be doing this, but as you mentioned, it gives me that platform to do it to more people. Now, now you're gonna laugh about yeah. Jamie, by the way. Yeah. Because Jay, do you know your profile picture of him? Yeah. I shot that. Oh, no, really? <laughs> so, okay. yeah, so, well, so, but, yeah, but he, but oh, it was phenomenal. He was a phenomenal person to work with. Yeah. And I remember him calling me right after you received uh -huh. your your um, uh, visionary. Right. I was excited. Then all of a sudden, I saw he was on it. Uh -huh. And then he said, "Hey, do you mind if I use that image?" 
Yeah. Like, well, I'd be honored. You know, yeah. then of course we, we did the sports grit look, the fun, yeah. aggressive, yeah. but we, yeah. we had to tone it down right. for, yeah. for your brochure. Yeah. But I love the guy to death. Yeah. And you're right, that was another one. You guys right. did a great job. And I didn't I didn't realize he was part time. Yeah. Um I knew I knew he yeah. did other well, things. The of it is he's part time, he shoots more than most pros yeah. do. Like like that's the that's the thing you have to realize. Like and, and so I, you know, I don't want to give the misimpression like, oh yeah, you take a couple pictures, you might be a visionary. No, this is a man. I'm not kidding. His passion. If he doesn't, if he doesn't pick up a camera for a day or two, he's out of sorts. He's just out of sorts. This guy gets up insanely early in the morning, goes out and shoots. Comes home from work, goes out and shoots. Not to mention, he chases crazy weather and stuff yes. that. Uh, I like comfortable environments, okay? <laughs> no, we, we, we like the studio and, okay, let's bring that light down just a bit. He's chasing tornadoes. And exactly. So, but, but that's, you know, that's what I appreciate about Olympus's program is that it's really about embracing photography. It's people that are passionate about their gear and, and people that really can communicate because communication is a big piece of it and you understand that from an educational standpoint. You know, there are good teachers and bad teachers, but it all starts with passion. It simply starts with passion. And, you know, that's for a company to recognize it, I, I think it's outstanding because it projects an image to people that put in the hard work, put it because let's face it, good photography is still hard work. It's not the camera that you buy. You put in the hard work, you know, you can do this. It's something but you know, you've got to be willing to put the effort in. And these guys do. These guys, I want to be like them. I mean, it's great that I do what I do and I love it. But believe me, I, I would love to get to the point where I can shoot and produce the way they do. I just that's awesome now he brought out a really good point because i do like the idea the micro four thirds he produced a billboard out of it again do you remember the old days with hp printers oh my god 300 PP, or dpi 600 dpi 1200 dpi wow we're printing at 3000 dpi <laughs> and after a while it's like wait a second i don't get it what's the di my 300 looks a little bit or the 600 looks a little bit better than the, than the three the 1200 looks like the 600. So to me, that whole crop sensor is more of a marketing ploy and stuff. But explain to us, some, like, what's your, his camera right now? What are the megapixels roughly? So you're looking at 20 megapixels. Okay. Um, we also have the high res shot with a tripod that can do an 80 megapixel raw. Wow. Or the handheld high res, which is one of my favorite functions. Um, it's one that I didn't expect to love as much as I do, but I wind up shooting with it all the time now. Um, and that's a 50 megapixel. Okay. So now, when, so the article I wrote, how many megapixels do you need to print an image? Yeah. Okay. So I guess the question is, you're saying it's it's a how many megapixel again? 20. Okay. So 20 megapixels. So if you took a 20 megapixel camera here and then a full frame 20 megapixel, what what's the I mean, how are they comparing? As far as our number one, the resolution quality of our lenses. So the ability to resolve, gather fine detail, contrast, everything. Um, our lenses are renowned. Uh, the other thing is, is and it's interesting too, because the conversations of when the whole four thirds, not micro, when the whole four thirds thing and that four by three sensor hit, the whole idea of telecentricity, the light coming through the lens and then hitting the pixel well at the right angle so that you're not causing shadowing. Um, and you even called back that in your recent presentation because you said edge to edge sharpness and things like that. So um, the reality is, is our ability to gather fine detail and then render it properly. Um, I mean, we all are aware that you can grab a 20 megapixel cell phone size sensor and then compare the two and which is going to be, we've been through the megapixel wars. We played that game. It didn't end well. Um, now we're in the sensor size wars. Um, we're just a different company. We're saying no, what we're good at is making compact, is making small, making stuff that's actually usable. The camera that you're gonna use is the one that you have with you. Um, and we can, we can continue talking about the benefits of large sensors and other things, but there is a very large group of people um, that need camera gear that isn't gonna kill them any longer, not gonna hurt their back, and they can bring it with them everywhere. So. Now, now, it's funny, I mean, think about this. We were, well, I'm in Florida. And while this poor guy is shoveling snow, I'll text him from my hot tub, yes. or, my, or I'll text him from the pool. Hey, Joe, what are you up to? Let me guess, you're in the pool right now, aren't you? You're writing, aren't you? Yes, Joe, I'm sorry. Um, but sometimes, like they'll say, hey, here we are, it's 90 degrees, but it feels like it's 95. Yeah. 
So that's how I look at honestly when we're looking at a lot of these pictures. It's like okay, I don't, I don't care. I can't guess what megapixel this is. I look at the image. That's a sharp looking image. Who cares what the megapixels are? Is if it looks phenomenal, that's all that matters. So like you said, we're, we're done in the days. The megapixel wars are done. Stop comparing that. Um, the whole goal to look at is the quality. And, and like you said. You've always been known for the lenses. That's always been. I mean, that's yeah. that's been. That's been it. Yep. Um, and you brought up a good point. And no, I'm I'm rounding that age. No, and I joked about you know uh, heaviness. Yes, but the, the the cameras that I that I carry are extremely heavy for sports. I'm used to it. Yeah. But I do feel it in my back afterwards, or my arms after a while. And then when I did pick up. The first cam the first mirrorless, I felt like for me, my hands are so big, it was, oh man, it feels like a little toy. It's one of those things you have to get used to and decide whether or not it's worth it. So um, now so we're here. I'm gonna put you on the spot and I'm gonna take a chance. I know what you're used to. You haven't held well, one of these wait, yet, have no, you? No, no, no. This I, I have and I'll tell you why. So because you have the battery grip on it. No, no, that's not the battery grip on it. This is the new one. This no, is the M1X, saying. right. You, but This is built right in. But put it on your hand. Well, now, no, 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 no. Right. I agree. Okay. This feels right. like the real camera now. Exactly. Yeah, oh, right. I, I totally and, agree. And I, I will tell you, when I came to Olympus, obviously they didn't have this. They had the EM1 Mark II with the grip. Everybody flipped out when this camera was announced. Oh my God, it's gigantic. It's so big. <laughs> it's, it's, barely, it's barely bigger than the EM1 Mark II with the grip. And the, the only real ergonomic difference, there's a small one and a big one. The small one, this grips a little deeper, which for somebody like you who's used to that bigger camera, it's a much nicer fit. But the real cool difference, and you're not going to find this in any other brand with their motor on it, watch where my fingers are with the buttons, oh, yes, okay? Yes, yes, yes. When I go to vertical, exact same experience ergonomically. Everything is set up so that it mirrors completely. So from the standpoint, what do we all do as photographers? The more we learn our cameras, we learn the muscle memory, right? The muscle memory is exactly the same horizontal and vertical. And if you notice each of the buttons, it's a different tactile experience. So you quickly can tell what button you're on just by the way the button feels. Well, this, I do have to say, um, it's a buyer's market. I mean, oh, yeah. for, for us, oh, it's yeah. definitely a buyer's market because there, there's so many th options out there. And what that's forcing a lot of the manufacturers to do is to come up with stuff like this yeah. and say, hey, all right, so this is what we're going to do. But guys, let's get back to photography. This is what we're doing with it. Yeah. This is make how I look at this is a I'm building a little dog house for my own dog. OK, I have a hammer. I have a nail. I can do it. My neighbors like it. Now all 15 of them want a doghouse. Well, now I'm going to go out and buy a nail gun. Yeah. Now I have to buy something. So that's, and I love how your system grows with you. Yeah. So, so right? So a, a yeah. beginner coming out and they're just starting out, what camera would you recommend? Um, either EM10, uh, the, either the EM10 series, or if they need the weather resistance, because they're, you know, people that are out in the elements, then EM5. And then? They get into it for a while, and all of a sudden they want to upgrade. Yeah. Now they start upgrading right. to different levels, and the resale values on these are <laughs> really good. My, I'm not going to mention which, I almost said it. I'm not going to mention which PC computer I have for my laptop, right. um, but I, I, I'll just say it. I have a beautiful Surface. I love my Surface 4. Mm -hmm. I checked out the resale value. They wanted to give me 125 bucks for it, and I almost had a heart attack. Yep. And I was like, "No, I'd rather give this to my goddaughter or somebody yep. Yep. to play with," um, because the new one just came out. Right. But the cameras, I think for us as photographers right now, right. we're in a great position. Sure. And what's even better is they're selling the camera, but they're selling the education that comes with it, right? And that, that's the whole. And and what Joe is teaching, and I love the fact that you guys do this what he's teaching can be applied to any type of cameras oh, you know but then after a while you start to watch the stuff that he's doing and there may be things that he does do with this camera that you could do with others but it's gonna be a little bit harder you know because that's your workflow exactly well it's workflow and features like one of the things I'm doing here on stage is a feature that Olympus has called live composite yeah, so where it's allowing you to do basically um, 
as many time exposures as you want, all in the same frame, but it only adds new light, so it's an additive process. So the technique that I'm doing with it, it's kind of a hack that I'm making portrait backgrounds. But yeah, somebody with a Nikon or a Canon or a Sony, they could do it. The difference is they would do it with a, a time exposure, a bulb. They need to do it in the dark. But the great part of it is, and again, I'm not trying to kiss up, I've never been told everything's got to be Olympus-centric. I've been told teach. Teach with your Olympus gear. So even a feature like that, I point out on stage, hey, if you're not, a, if you're not an Olympus user and you're sitting here, don't go away. You can use this at home. You're just going to do it with a bulb exposure. Exactly. It's right. a different way of doing it. But again, so I, I do have to give you, because you're the guy in charge, uh, of finding these people, and I give you a lot of credit and thank you. Because again, there's a lot of stuff that we learned from uh, your visionaries and the stuff that you do from there. So awesome job. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. It's uh, it's quite an honor to be able to deal with uh, you know, this group. They are very inspirational. Um, and it's also fun just watching it grow. Like the amount of people that are coming out of the woodwork now, too, that maybe weren't receptive or weren't as interested, and they're like, I'm done. I, I need smaller, I need this, I like what you guys are doing. So, and it is really growing. But it's also growing because they're seeing the success of these people, they're seeing the results that they're getting. Uh, so the affirmation of the proof is coming through for the people that purposely, you know, maybe wouldn't give us the time of day, and now they're definitely looking at us, so. Well, hey guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate Thanks your time. Us. All right. Well, hey, I'm Vanelli here in Las Vegas at WPPI for the Photo Focus team. Thank you so much for watching.